it's very important that we never overfill these recovery tanks, or any cylinder for that matter. A recovery tank should never be more than 80% full. That allows that last 20% of vapor for expansion. It's our safety factor. As any liquid starts to heat up, that liquid will start to expand or move apart. So as this tank starts to heat up, the same weight of refrigerant will now take up more space inside that tank. So if I had this tank overfilled, as the temperature of this tank went up, the refrigerant would start to expand and the pressure would go up and it'd have no place to go. And when this refrigerant got completely full of liquid and it continued to expand, it would then be hydraulics, it would rupture this tank and cause either an explosion or us to lose all the refrigerant out of this tank. It's a safety factor. So we want to make sure that we never overfill these tanks. Now that sounds simple. Make sure it's not over 80% full. And for the most part it is. However, the catch is that different refrigerants take up different volumes. That's key, different refrigerants take up different volumes. So if you remember back to an earlier video where we had the graduated cylinder, we could see if we change the temperature and the pressure of a refrigerant, it would change up how much space it took up inside the cylinder. The same thing is happening here. But what's important also is knowing that different refrigerants had different volumes as well. For example, I could only put five pounds of R12 in here, I could put four pounds, eight ounces of R400 and four pounds, eight ounces of R22. Now those refrigerants are fairly close together, but you can see how there was a difference in how much refrigerant the cylinder could handle. The same thing is going to apply to different refrigerants in the field. For example, these two tanks, let's add refrigerant A in this tank and I put say 18 pounds of refrigerant. At 18 pounds of refrigerant A, I could have overfilled this tank, been above the 80% level and it would be a danger. Refrigerant B is in this exact same tank, but refrigerant B, I still put the exact same weight of refrigerant, say 18 pounds. It's possible to be underfilled under the 80% point and have the exact same weight of refrigerant because different refrigerants have different volumes. In other words, refrigerants have a different weight or a specific gravity space inside these cylinders. However you want to look at it. So there's a couple different numbers we're going to need on these tanks and what's happening inside. The first number is the simplest number. It's called TW and TW simply stands for tear weight. If you notice a lot of the scales, they'll have a tear or zero button. That's going to be the zero at out point. So in these TWs where it says tear weight, you can also think of it as tank weight. Now officially it's called tear weight, but if you think of it as tank weight, TW tank weight, it's going to be okay. Now every different manufacturer can use a different amount of metal or use different components when they make their tank. There is no set number of how much these tanks weigh. But if we look in the tank itself, it says TW for tank weight or tear weight. This one weighs 15.1 pounds. This one weighs 16 pounds. This one's a heavier tank. If I look on this tank, it weighs 17.1 pounds. So three different tanks look identical, but there's a big number difference between how much the tank itself weighs. The tear weight is different. This larger tank, it has a tank weight of 28.4 pounds. It's a larger tank, so it's gonna have more metal involved. That's the weight of these tanks by themselves. So if I put this tank on a scale, it says TW of 15.1. So the tank weighs 15.1 pounds. If I was to put it on the scale and the scale said 15.1 pounds, I would know this tank was empty of any liquid refrigerant. It may still be some vapor, but it's empty of any weighable liquid refrigerant. So the different tanks are gonna be important to know. Now the next number that we need to know is WC and WC stands for water capacity. And this is kind of weird, but if I was to fill this tank 100% full of liquid H2O water, it would weigh 26.2 pounds if it's completely full. But we know that we should never fill anything 100% full, so I should only do 80% of that. So I'd take 26.2 times 80% and that's 80% if I was to fill it with water. On this tank, its water capacity is also 26.2. So I could put 26.2 pounds of water at 100% full, but I only want to do 80% of that. On this tank, I'd put a maximum of 20.96 pounds of water in this tank. That's kind of ridiculous because we'd never put water in these tanks, but still we'd put 80% of its WC water capacity. This tank is also 26.2 WC. So at 100% full, I could put 26.2 pounds of water. But at 80% full, I'd put 20.96 pounds of water in this tank to be at 80%. This tank has a much larger volume to it. So the water capacity is going to be higher. The water capacity of this tank is 47.6 pounds. That's significant. That's a big difference. 47.6 pounds, 100% full of water. We should never be 100% full of water. So we'll take a calculator. 47.6 times 80%. So I can put a maximum of 38 pounds of water in this tank to be at 80% full. 
So that's our water capacity. But again, we're not putting water in these tanks and different refrigerants have different weights and none of the refrigerants weigh the same as water that I know of. So we're gonna need a way of calculating how much refrigerant we can put in these tanks and what would the tank weigh if it was full. The cool thing is we have an app to make that happen. We're gonna talk about several methods, but the first one I'm gonna talk about is the easiest method. So I'm gonna get my phone, I'm gonna pull up the app. So I'm gonna to go to my HVAC school app. When this app loads up, I'm gonna press on tools. Tools, I'm gonna to scroll down to where it says recovery tank fill. It's gonna have some questions for me. The first question says, what is the tank tear weight? So we're gonna start with this tank and it says TW 15.1. So we're gonna in here, 15.1. Then it says, what is our tank water capacity? We look in here, it says WC 26.2. So I'm gonna put 26.2. We'll leave our maximum temperature 130 and let's say we have R22. So R22, we'll leave it at 22. Calculate the total, the tank weight and the fill weight. The maximum it should ever weigh is 37.37 pounds. That's the total weight of the tank and the contents. So what I could do is take my scale and I zero my scale out. Then I'm gonna take my tank and put it on to the scale. And I know the maximum, the tank and its contents should not weigh any more than 37.37 pounds. But if I look, my tank weighs 15 pounds, 12 ounces. So the good news is I have plenty of room to hold a lot more refrigerant. I'm a long ways from being completely full. And I also know that my tank weight being, and I have 15 pounds, 12 ounces, tells me that there is liquid refrigerant still in this tank. So I know it's not completely empty, but you can also switch it and you can feel that liquid refrigerant move around in there. So that's the total tank and its contents. So I'm working on a system, it holds 15 pounds of refrigerant. I know that this tank can handle the difference in a refrigerant. I'm good to go. So it's pretty cool, it's a quick little way of doing that. Let's say this is a brand new tank with DOT 400 rating and we wanted to put 410A refrigerant. So I'm gonna switch the refrigerant to 410A and hit calculate. Now the total refrigerant, the tank and its contents can weigh a maximum of 33.47 pounds. That means that the refrigerant alone, I can only put 18.37 pounds of refrigerant in this tank. It's our exact same tank with the exact same tear weight, with the exact same water capacity, I can put a different quantity of refrigerant in here. That's because 410A has a different weight than it does with R22. It takes up a different volume. So we can't go in simply one number alone. We have to also take into account the different weights of refrigerant. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Now let's go through another example to let that drive home. This tank right here has R134A in it, and I don't know how much refrigerant's in here. So if I put this onto the scale, my scale says it weighs 20 pounds, four ounces. Well, can I put more refrigerant in here or is it completely full? Let's find out. So let's put our numbers in here. We're gonna look for our TW for tank weight, 17.1 pounds. So we're gonna change our number to 17.1. It says our water capacity, we're gonna put 26.2. And we're gonna put our refrigerant here for 134A. Hit calculate. Now it says the tank contents and the tank itself, the total weight of this tank should be no more than 39.75 pounds. And I'm at 20 pounds. So I know I can still put refrigerant in this tank. I can actually put in at 19.75 pounds refrigerant tank. So it has a lot of room left over in it. If I want to look at only the refrigerant alone, it could hold a maximum of 22.65 pounds of refrigerant inside. So the app is cool because it automatically does all this calculation for us. This tank with R22 would hold a maximum of 39.37 pounds and have a maximum refrigerant inside of 22.27 pounds. If we're to use it with 410A, the tank and the contents weigh 35.47 pounds. And if it was a refrigerant owned, it could only hold 18.37 pounds. Let's switch to a different refrigerant, 404A. Here it could hold a maximum of 17.86 pounds and the tank and the contents maximum should be no more than 34.96. Let's go to R12. R12, the tank and its contents would be a maximum of 42.15 and I could put a maximum of 25.05 pounds of refrigerant. Well, water capacity is only 26.2, but I could put 25.05 pounds of refrigerant in this tank. 
What's cool is this app already does the 80% for you. So we know exactly how much refrigerant we could put in here. So the app is super cool. It's really awesome. It makes our job a whole lot easier. We could enter in the numbers. Now, as we get more and more refrigerants, we'll have to start begging Brian and start putting more refrigerants in here. But it does have user defined. And what's cool about user defined is we can look up the liquid density of the refrigerant we're working with. So any of the refrigerants we have, we can contact the manufacturer, find out what the liquid density is, and we could enter that number in right here, and we can come up with any amount of refrigerant we're working with. But what's really important for you to know is that all the refrigerants are different. So just because I'm putting in, say, 18 pounds of refrigerant doesn't mean I'm at the 80% safe mark. Some refrigerants weigh more than water, and some refrigerants weigh less than water. Let's put the big tank on the scale. So we know that this tank is labeled with R410A refrigerant. Is this tank completely full? Can I put more refrigerant in? Let's use the app and find out. So it says our tank weight or tear weight is 28.4, our water capacity, WC, 47.6, and we're gonna select R410A refrigerant. That means the tank full, the maximum I could put in this tank and the tank itself would weigh 61.77 pounds. We talked about moving these big tanks around. Could you imagine carrying around 61 pounds of refrigerant up and down a ladder? That's a lot of weight to have to carry. So I don't like these big tanks because they're harder on my back. But if you're doing commercial work, sometimes you have a lot of refrigerant you gotta take out and these big tanks are gonna actually be easier overall. But you can see that this tank and contents with 410A is gonna be a lot of refrigerant. Let's see how much my tank and contents weigh. The total weight is 36 pounds. So I'm at 36 pounds total tank and contents. And the maximum is 61.77. So I can put a lot of extra refrigerant still in this tank. It has a large capacity left. So now I know it's 410A and I can do the subtraction and find out exactly how much refrigerant this still can hold. But I certainly wouldn't want to carry this full tank up and down a ladder. But what if I use this exact same tank for some other refrigerants? Let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna switch this refrigerant to R22. If I was to put R22 in this tank, it would weigh a maximum of 68.85 pounds, the tank and its contents. Could you imagine pulling 68 pounds up and down a ladder? But say we can put more weight of R22 than we can put for today. R22 takes up less volume, so we can put more pounds of refrigerant in this tank. Same tank, but we can put more pounds of refrigerant. The total contents, just the contents alone, this tank can hold 40.45 pounds of liquid R22. Let's compare that to some other refrigerants. Let's say it's gonna put R134A in here. 69.55 pounds and 41.15 total tank and its contents would weigh 69.55 pounds and just the refrigerant alone would be 41.15. Say 404A, which is a very popular commercial refrigerant, that tank and its contents would be 60.84 pounds, and I could only put 32 pounds of refrigerant inside of this tank. 407C would be a maximum tank and contents of 66.39. So if I was to look at my scale and it weighed over 66.39, I know this tank would be overfilled. I need to recover some refrigerant out. The contents alone, just the contents, it could hold 37.99 pounds of refrigerant. Switch over to R12. This is cool, R12, that means the tank and its contents, if it's R12, would hold 73.91 pounds of refrigerant. That's a whole lot of big weight difference, 79 pounds. If it was R12 alone at 80% full, it would be at 45.51 pounds of refrigerant. Our water capacity at 100% was 47.6, but R12, I could put 45.51 pounds. That means R12 at 80% is almost as water would be at 100%. Hopefully it gives you an idea, an understanding that different refrigerants take up different volumes and have different weights. We don't have just one number we can throw in there. So this app really makes it simple. Now let's do a video talking about the long form way of doing it. If we want to do the math without the app.